Have you ever wondered what kind of sport or exercise would help you live the longest? Well, it's been studied and there is widely different improvements in life expectancy between activities. So let's break this down, which is the best, and at the end, we'll give our ideas of why we think some are higher than others, which may or may not actually be to do with the activity itself. Starting at 1.5 year extension, we have health club activities. So this is classic gym work and makes sense. You get fitter and stronger, it will allow you to live longer, but it's nowhere near as much as some of the others on this list. At 3.1 years is calisthenics. This is body weight workouts and this makes sense. Having more body control is only a good thing to help stop accidents like falls. But at more than double health club activities, what would explain that? I think if able to do a lot of exercises that involve body weight, it would generally suggest a good foundation of strength. Whereas health club activities, it's a bit more vague where you could just be lifting really light weights, not necessarily being very strong, or it could just be including people that are sitting in the jacuzzi. Just above calisthenics at 3.2 years is jogging. Makes sense, builds good cardiovascular health and can offset a lot of heart issues, which is one of the biggest killers in modern society. Close to that is swimming at 3.4 years, likely for very similar reasons. And just above that, cycling at 3.7 years, again, likely with very similar effects. The next start to take much bigger jumps. And we'll explain likely reasons for this. So at 4.7 years, we have soccer. And then a really big jump from that is badminton at 6.2 years and a massive jump up from that is tennis the top of the list at a whopping 9.7 year increase so why is it that some of them offer such a big increase compared to others is it actually all to do with the sport or can you take aspects from it to apply it to anything else cardiovascular fitness is obviously important however Jogging and tennis will both improve that, but tennis has tripled the increase of jogging. So there's obviously more to it, and I believe the difference is twofold. The first being that while jogging, swimming and cycling are great, they are very much single direction repetitive modalities, whereas football, badminton and tennis involve a lot of direction changes. And those quick changes with body control, improving strength and balance, could make all the difference here. And this would be more profound for badminton and tennis, having to bend down more than in soccer, which would explain the difference there. And I'll explain why it's such a big deal. One of the biggest things we tend to see that result in a rapid decline for an older person is a fall that causes a fracture, especially a neck of femur fracture, a really common one affecting the hip. And it's said that for an 80 year old, 10 days of bed rest has the equivalent effect of a year's worth of muscle loss. So the deterioration can be so fast. And if you imagine just being able to catch yourself because you have the leg strength and balance to stop the fall in the first place, that can make all the difference. The second aspect which can't be ignored has nothing to do with the physical nature of the activities, but is the social aspect of the sports, which the paper also states here. Jogging, swimming and cycling can all be done solo, whereas soccer, badminton and tennis require other people. And therefore, it seems having a great social aspect alongside can't be overlooked. A lot of older people may die earlier simply due to loneliness, as friends and spouses start to die and the effects of loneliness to health are becoming more and more apparent. All this, however, doesn't explain the difference of tennis and badminton. And I think this is down to socioeconomic variables. Tennis is generally done by pretty well-off people. And we know that being wealthy can have great longevity outcomes. Just naming access to better healthcare for one. With all that said, we do have to be careful taking absolutes from the paper. With the old, correlation does not equal causation. A classic example of this is tracking ice cream sales and shark attacks. They line up very nicely, so it could be concluded that people seeing a shark attack makes them want to eat more ice cream, or do sharks have some sense that someone's had an ice cream and it makes them more appealing, so attack when they otherwise wouldn't. So for this paper, it could be that people who are generally healthier as they age are able to play more sports and naturally live longer compared to someone who is really ill that is unable to engage in as many activities. However, these are still really interesting findings, especially the comparison between sports. 
So if wanting to live a longer life, it seems a great approach is to get rich and play a social sport that works cardiovascular system and involves a lot of quick direction changes.